This is Eloy Federal Detention Center in the Arizona desert. Every day, across America, some 34,000 immigrants who arrived in the U.S. illegally are held at this and similar facilities. 34,000 is not a random number. It's a number mandated by Congress as a way to track deportation. Fill the beds at a cost of $2 billion a year to taxpayers. Broken, says Congressman Bill Foster, a Democrat from Illinois, because a percentage of immigrants are detained, it appears, simply to meet the political bed quota. Noemi Romero was working as a $142 a week grocery cashier when deputies raided the store and detained her. Romero has been in the U.S. illegally since she was three. Local prosecutors charged her with criminal impersonation for using someone else's Social Security number to get paid. After serving two months in county jail, she was shipped to Eloy, pending removal. After six weeks, an immigration officer came to her cell. Romero was released, no deportation, but no legal status either. She says her immigration case is now considered low priority. Like Romero, Zoila Palaya Bazan came to this country illegally with her parents when she was a child more than two decades ago. She was working as a pool attendant at a five-star hotel when she was arrested for a broken taillight. She was also detained at Eloy. Like Palaya Bazan, all the detainees at Eloy entered the U.S. illegally. Often they spend months fighting to remain. Yet those with violent criminal records or felonies are usually fast-tracked for deportation. Eloy is one of a number of privately run facilities the government contracts with, paying about $120 per person, per day. Figures show the two largest private detention companies together made about a half billion dollars last year from government contracts. The same day we visited Eloy, we were given access to a transport plane, also operated by a private company. All these men crossed the border illegally. Most were at Eloy. Half are felons. There's no guarantee that some of these men won't try to return to the United States. As for Noemi Romero, she will stay in the U.S., but may no longer qualify for legal status after pleading guilty to using someone else's identity at her job. Zoila Palaya Bazan, on the other hand, is currently applying. Deborah Feyerich, CNN, Phoenix, Arizona.